All right. All right, man. What's up, everybody? Planet Xbox Podcast, powered by Weapon Wheel Podcast, Weapon Wheel Network, Weapon Wheel Patreon, episode four. I am your host, the best about Kid Smooth, with my co host, Lord Gaming Attic, man. And you're coming fresh out of LA. Yeah, uh, in the hotel, because we had to do the show. They were uh, doing like fan fest stuff. Uh, I wasn't technically invited into the fan fest, but mm-hmm. I was able to, uh, to to get myself into it. Uh, so you know, shout shout out to all that going on. But you know, when you messed me, we doing Planet Xbox. I was like, I guess. So I just left. Ah <laughs> uh, man, I mean, we're not gonna hold you too tight because um, I know you got to enjoy. It's, it's a special time being out there with other um, uh, other creators and content creators and stuff like that. Um, but you you were there live, so your 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 experience is probably going to be you know different than what mine was watching at home. Uh, today we're going to do the podcast a little little differently. This is just rapid reactions to what we just saw, and uh, we're going to do the Patreon questions uh, at the end of the podcast. So um, just bear uh, with us on that. We will get to those uh, questions for sure, but we're just going to do them at the end of the podcast. But Overall, man, your initial thoughts, uh, gaming attic. Uh, they 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 opened up with Fable. Yeah, um, I I think Fable looked fantastic. I, I actually think because I've always said for a while that Fable needs to be Fable, but at the same time, it needs to evolve. It can't just be yeah. the initial Fable we got back then because I think that that formula is one of the reasons that Fable you know went away for a while because it just wasn't resonating with as many people as it could have now clearly they're still having that that humor and i think the humor is not the issue the issue is how they present the humor it felt like it was felt more natural obviously we haven't seen the the gameplay you know there's a lot more that we can see and i think we are going to see more but you know it was a good and i think i said avowed would open it like it caught me off guard when i saw that playground game symbol and you know, people wanted to see gameplay. I get that because I wanted to see gameplay, but we can't ask to see more going forward. And then when they show us that without gameplay, then we get upset as well. Look, was it a hundred percent a CGI? No, it, it seemed like more of gameplay in the engine and yeah, yeah. you know, uh, cinematics from the game itself. Yep, it, it was kind of interesting how they had that big dude. Yeah, he, you know, he's narrated. You think he's just like a third party in the thing. He's not really in the game, but it, it looks like they brought giants of some sort to to Fable, and it was just interesting. I really enjoyed what I saw. Yeah, man. Um, when it opened up, I was surprised. I didn't think it would open up with a uh, Fable, but it's clear this is going to be the big game. Of, I, I mean, I don't know when it's coming out. Um, if it's next year or or twenty twenty five, but. I trust what I see. the this, The game looks representative of what Playground is is same at, same pretty much seeming to aim for. Uh, graphically, I trust that it's going to look pretty much close to this. We saw what they did with Forza Horizon Five when they first revealed the game, and it's running on the same engine, so we know what graphics uh, that that engine is capable of. And this wasn't too far from it. I thought it was. I honestly, I thought I was watching like a, 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 another version of Hogwarts Legacy when it first opened. But um, it was clearly a fable. It looks good. I'm, I'm I'm excited for it, and I can't wait to see more. Uh, they then followed up with. Go ahead. Real quick, did you see when they shot that fireball in that Fable thing? Yeah, yeah. Like, that fireball looked mad nice, like yes. it did. Like, I want to see more stuff like that. If you're not going to give me gameplay, yeah. give me more stuff I can realistically see in the game. And, and, you know, obviously they could have improved on here. They could have shown a little bit more of that. But I think what they wanted to do is they wanted to show you, look, this is Fable at its roots, and it still has that Fable humor. And I think that was the whole point in the direction they went with that particular trailer. I think the trailer was fantastic, you know. I, I would have preferred a little bit more gameplay in it, yeah. you know, gameplay slices. But I think for the most part, it was good. All right. What did you think of Compulsion finally showing up out of the dark with their uh, uh, South of Midnight? Uh, we th- This game's been leaked for a while. I think, you know, for the most part, we knew this was here. They just hired a, a community manager. So obviously they're going to need a they need they need a game to manage a community and. The game wasn't announced yet. You know, we saw a couple key characters. Uh, 
like some kind of beast hunter or something like that. I like yeah. I need to be a little bit more specific when it comes to that particular game. But I, I do think that they did a good job on revealing uh, like main characters and, and stuff like that. You know, I always give them one a uh, one CGI, and I don't think that was a CGI. That was like a cut scene in the game. But at the same time, it's like you could have gave us a little bit of splices when it comes to gameplay. Like that that's the biggest criticism I would give to that. Mm-hmm. Because the game's been in development for a while. And I feel like there's no way you couldn't have did something similar. You did a, to Fable where show me a little gameplay with that trailer. But it was a yeah. good trailer for its first reveal. Yeah, and when do you think this game is coming? Uh 2025. Okay. Okay. Um I think uh, so. Uh, the, one of the thing about this game is like I've I've recall seeing the uh, concept with the the woman in the game with the you know the black woman with the braids and whatnot. Um, it looks like there is compulsion, so they're coming with this this stark uh, art design um, where it looks uh, it's like clay like, and I think the game's gonna be beautiful, um, but it's gonna be an acquired taste. I'm looking forward to seeing more of what they do with that game but xbox came heavy with the first party with first party all we kept seeing was xbox game studio xbox game studio which kept making me happy and then uh it was finally i i thought for a little bit we got uh we were gonna get our own uh you know license i ip lucas art heavy games with uh uh ubisoft showed up their massive team showed up with the uh their star wars game which what, what's the name is this uh game it's um uh, what's the name of that Star Wars game? But it's currently playing now. This is uh, Ubisoft is doing this game. They're, we're gonna have gameplay reveal uh, tomorrow at their showcase at Ubisoft Ford. But what do you make of like Xbox? You know, showing you know a major third party game and it being a like a licensed game. Um, I thought I thought this was a good ad. Well, Smith, we we've said for a while Microsoft needs to do better in terms of. Uh, you know, marketing. Mm-hmm. They don't generally market the most popular games that's on the the market right now. That's true. I I don't know if this game's gonna be what we want it to be, but I do know it's a Star Wars game, and that's gonna matter in the long run. You know, hopefully Microsoft is in development enough to know if this is going to be a successful or not successful game, because you can market with a Star Wars game and you can do fine because it's got that Star Wars brand behind it. But what's better is a Star Wars game that's good. Mm-hmm. That's going to sell units. That's going to sell marketing. That's going to be worth investing into. Mm-hmm. And hopefully, Microsoft, you know, they have a good keen eye when it comes to that game. And uh, the way it looked, it looked good, but it was CGI. Like, like there was nothing I could really grasp onto that. Now, I'm hoping that people at Massive, I think that's the studio that made it. I'm hoping they they really fine tuned. It looked like a third person. That's the game I would expect from this kind of game. Yeah. Uh, so hopefully the, hopefully Microsoft stays really close by when it comes to this development of this game and they back a winning horse, because I feel like sometimes they'll back a winning horse. And then sometimes they'll back a winning horse that, that already has issues. And what I mean is like, you know, they'll back games such as I, I believe they backed Elden Ring. Uh, don't give me don't yeah. correct me yeah. correct me if i'm wrong yeah. if they didn't my bad but so that's an example of uh you know backing a, a winning a horse and then you got games and like diablo, cyberpunk diablo. It's a winning they got diablo yeah and, and and then you got games like like cyberpunk it's a winning horse but a trip yeah. so you know i'm hoping this game is 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 good i hope it definitely can help get more xboxes in the mainstream yeah um, but yeah, the, the, the first, I want to say 12, you know, minutes of the show with the with fable, uh, uh, South it was of heavy Midnight. hitting. It was, yeah. And the star Wars game was very, I was like, oh, wow. They, they opened up with a particular, actually the middle of the show. I, I, some of the stuff that they dropped in the middle of the show were things I expected them to, you know, either open and close with but the, like I said, the fable was a big deal. The, it was the two back to back, you know, first party um games and and the amount of new ips that was also uh uh revealed today so yeah they did they you know so far they you know did a good job um one of the things that i i did appreciate was they didn't spend too much time on those low tier low key games i feel like that could only count maybe like three and and uh and that was um you know those like those designated like indie titles that uh showed up um we've got a glimpse at 
the the first party one or the global publishing team that they're doing which is i think uh it's called what tower uh born tower born well uh, that looks incredible um you talk about the one where he was climbing no that's the uh no no the one that he was climbing that's going to be uh that's a it's called climb something but uh the tower born one is by it's uh it looks like you know like banter saga um it's by stoic um oh, okay. but it's like a different type and then they also had like the the team uh the thunder lotus team where they're making that game called 30 where it's the, up to 33 players co-op uh that That's caught insane. my attention that caught my attention you, you know what's funny when they first showed that mm -hmm. i was convinced that it was like a, a move because they showed all the people before they announced 30 some co-op yeah when yeah. i saw those people at first i was like oh that's a move that's like a move where you clone yourself or something like I don't know, they said 33 co-op and then they said raids they specifically yeah. said raids so i'm thinking you know let's go i think that game's gonna be a sleeper hit yeah uh it, it's called what 33 um or mortals or something like that yeah i think uh it looks it looks like uh it looked like hades right but it uh it probably it has that play style of um uh, I'm trying to think what other game that we we really play like this. Um, my, my thing is, is like how like a game like this could get chaotic if you're going to play 33 people all at the same time. That means if you're going to put 33 players in co-op, that means you have to have a, a shit ton of uh, of of AI uh, to show up and um, to fill the screen. It have to have, have a great deal of difficulty. Um, I'm looking forward to it. Um, I think that. I don't mind like games like this, you know, jumping in and just pretty much hoarding your way through doing uh, these raids. And you're familiar, obviously, with raids with your, you know, your history with Destiny and um, some of the other, you know, live service games and whatnot. But I think it's a good look. I think this is going to be one of those, uh, you know, low low key games that are that becomes very very popular and it comes out in 2024. 2020, 2024 is looking really big for Xbox and Xbox Game Pass. So um, uh, that was a uh a decent showing and in my opinion and, and that was the thing was like these games did show up but they didn't show up like too too much and then for i forgot all about payday payday 3 is uh coming out september 21st had a good showing here and is also launching day one in gay pass uh what, what are your what was your thoughts when they showed off uh payday 3 but we played payday first 2 off, a couple times yeah first off um I saw a lot of people trying to say that at first that it was contraband. Oh, yeah. When they first saw, like, the very beginning. Yeah. Uh, you know, once you see the mask, you know it's payday. Yeah. And Game Pass, day and day. They, you know, that, that that's a really good look. You know, the good thing that Microsoft's done is they've went after these smaller teams. And even though that they're in their show, because you see it like these small games at, like, a PlayStation, unless they appeal to you, it's not really going to mean much to you but you know what i like about xbox is a lot of these indie indie games that you don't know if it will appeal to you or not mm -hmm. unless like it was made by like the hades developer super massive i think that's what their name is i can't i don't, I don't remember uh so it's made by these studios you know you be a little bit more open to buying it a little bit more open to playing it but the good thing about when you see these showcases with Microsoft and Xbox is a lot of these indies and a lot of these double A games are in Game Pass. Mm -hmm. So even though that this, you know, a lot of these indie games is jumping out the window on whether or not you're going to like them. When it comes to Game Pass, you're able to at least try them and not have a whole lot invested into it. Yeah, true. Um, September has turned out to be a big month for Game Pass between uh, Starfield, uh, Payday 3 um Liza P and um I think uh Party Animals also come out that same month that, that is going to be an, an, an incredible month Atlas showed up big here and unfortunately I think this would have been a show the show was Atlas yeah I it would have been a showstopper had some had the Persona games didn't leak you know um you know two days prior um but the Persona 3 Reload coming day and day to Game Pass looks revamped. Uh, what are your thoughts on this? I mean, we've I don't know if we had an opportunity to speak about this uh, since the last podcast, but this was part of our prediction. We said, I, I said Persona 3 Remake shows up, and I was hoping they would reveal after the Persona 3, Persona 6, but they end up revealing 
uh, another Atlas, a new IP from Atlas, uh, which um, is just as good. Uh, but what Metaphor, what, I think is what it was yeah. called. So what was that's your, big? Yeah, what's your your th- your thoughts on that? With the Atlas being here and they're being up, they're being here with three games, all in Game Pass. I think clearly, you know, when it comes to PlayStation, Xbox, and Nintendo, Atlas and particularly Sega, because we saw a lot of Sega games here. If you really get technical, there's a lot of them. Yeah, the Yakuza. We saw the Like a Dragon, Dragon, uh, Mm -hmm. like what three set Atlas games. Mm -hmm. So that's four games. It's just Sega. Yeah. Uh, So you know, I I think it's good, man. I, I, I think that. They can't get Final Fantasy, obviously. There's a lot of issues going on with that. Yeah. So one could say Atlas is making just as good as quality. You know, maybe not to some people, but especially to old style turn based game uh, heads like me that came up off of that old Final Fantasy traditional way and not like, uh, you know, a direction they're going more action orientated. I think that Atlas is a good company to really get behind. Now, I'm curious if. Because this close relationship, because if you you haven't really seen Sega team up with too many people in the past couple of years, yeah. it's always been Microsoft. Yeah. So uh, I'm very interested if um, you know the ABK deal goes through, or if it doesn't go through, if Microsoft just goes ahead and and, and just buys them, like because it's like now we're not talking about we're talking about you going out there and you announcing your new IP on mm-hmm. an Xbox stage. Like you, you're doing more than you've ever done, and you know, maybe at the very least, I hope that relationship continues. I think all the personas will look good. I know you don't like the technical stuff, but I think Persona Tactical yeah. look really fun. Uh, Persona Three, uh, I don't rebound or rebate. Uh, I don't know what the hell they called that. That looked good. Uh, you know, Metaphor looked good. It was a solid showing of Atlas. You know, if anything, it showed when it comes to JRPGs, Atlas is one of the top developers out there. Yeah. And um, after, like, that Persona 3 show, we got, uh, they just threw Avowed in the middle of the look. And I, honestly, when I first when it first came up, I thought it was Assassin's Creed. If, if, I thought it was like, oh, my God, like another... That, uh, that yeah. slow yeah. pace off on a dock thing yeah. that, that Ubisoft was yeah. doing. Once it said Obsidian, I was like, it couldn't be no more. And then and they started to see the characters. I was like, all right, you know, it, it gives off like a colorful Skyrim vibe. I saw some reaction. Oh, yeah, I wore this to the Xbox show. Oh, the hold the line. I'm still waiting for my hold the line short shirt, unfortunately. You know, Aaron Greenboard wore. Uh, yeah, Greenboard I saw a lot of photos of him. I, I saw the ticker that read hold the line. I saw the videos. They 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 kind of held down uh with that. No shout out the king. Um but they vowed, man. It looks good. It looks like a colorful Skyrim. Um, it could they, it comes out uh next year. Um, what do you think of the showing of Avowed? Of I think Avowed looked good. I will say, in terms of like the gameplay, I, mm-hmm. I will call a little bit of a of of a of a downgrade in the graphics. A downgrade from what I do CGI? Think, for, well, no, just like even though if it's CGI, they still kind of you still have the responsibility to give some kind of realistic expectation of what you think the game's going to look to some degree. Like, like when you look at that CGI on, on a valve, like, the way the fire held in. Now, I'm not saying the whole game was downgraded. Mm. I'm just saying from what they put in my expectations from that particular trailer, the game looked a little bit more realistic and have realistic graphics and not a little bit less art. <laughs> like, the game looked a little bit art... art you know, colorful than I originally anticipated off of what they showed me in that CGI. Because look, you can you can debate on a lot of things on whether or not you should judge a game off of graphics off of CGI, but I think it, at the very least, it should give you the direction they're going to go in the art style. And I feel like the art style for the avowed and what we got are they're not two different things, but they're noticeably different. Yeah, I mean, I. I... I mean, I, I guess this is where I disagree with a lot of people online because a lot of people were like, oh, I had total different expectations for Avowed. All we seen from Avowed was statues, burning arrows, and then when we finally got like a first-person character, it was a sword and him doing a hand gesture, and it just looked it looked like a CGI. It didn't look like a video game at all. Um, and so I feel like what they gave us, uh, and now it, from concept to reality, this is actually a more realistic expectation of the game. It honestly looks like uh, the people who made uh, Outer Worlds 
attempt to make Skyrim, and it looks like a colorful Skyrim, in my opinion. I, um, and, and and that's not really uh like a bad thing. Um, I am interested. No, I I don't want people like listening to think that like I'm shitting on the game. Yeah. Uh, me having different expectations of how I felt like the game should have looked compared to what they show me in that CGI. Me thinking the game's bad are two different things. Yeah. Like, I thought what I saw looked phenomenal. It's just when I saw it, and for a couple seconds, I was in a little bit shocked because I expected the way they they deliver it in that CGI. It's not that it looked cartoony mm-hmm. compared to what I saw, but in the CGI, it looked a little bit more. Skyrim, like just maybe with lighter colors, yeah, yeah, you know what I'm yeah. saying? Mm-hmm. But this one looked more like the outer worlds, yeah. Um, so the thing is, we got the release year. I mean, I, I, I thought so about I, you know, I was hoping you know, we got would be the early 2024 game, um, but uh, it said 2024, so that kind of leaves up the whole uh, the whole year as a window. Just to get uh, uh you know just a quick follow up on that r- a release window, uh, do you think this is a Q one, Q two, or Q three, Q four? For about Q two, Q two, okay. Yeah, Q two. This and, was unless unless the one of these games they showed this week this today, I'm starting to be convinced it's going to be the holiday game next year. I just don't know if that's going to be Hellblade or a Vow. Now, the way Phil Spencer said in that kind of funny interview, it kind of seemed like he was compa- putting Hellblade with Starfield. So, to me, it, he was kind of giving expectations on these games are going to be closer. Because if he would have, if he had star- uh, avowed in that same mindset, he would have said avowed too. But he said, he said Starfield and Hellblade. He said Hellblade last. So, to me, those two are closer than avowed is because he said Hellblade. Yeah. Hellblade must be Q, uh, must be Q1, I guess. So it's 2024 yeah, it, should be like the start of the one big game every quarter, right? Yeah. Yeah, and you'll probably see, probably see Hellblade, and maybe four months later you'll see Avowed. Yeah. For all we know, like the good thing now is Microsoft has a good set, and when it comes to these directs, they can do these directs anytime they want now. Mm-hmm. So it's not like one of those things they have to wait for an E3 to announce a release date or a games con mm-hmm. or, or games con or a video game awards. You know they're still going to utilize these things, but they're going to they're going to take a lot of their of their own announcements. And you've seen that with this because if you notice at the video uh, at the Summer Game Fest, none of this stuff was there. Like they could have mm-hmm. easily have shown you know the Sea of Thieves or maybe the Fallout seventy six and. They would have been present during that show, but it didn't really take a whole lot from their show. But they chose to hold all of that for their show. Yeah. So to me, they that is all the proof you need that they're starting to build their own platforms up and not relying on other platforms. Absolutely. Um, they also showed uh, they're coming out with another uh, flight sim, flight sim twenty twenty four. Uh, I mean, based- I wish they would just call that flight sim too. No, when no, when they you base it on a year, like um, uh, this is uh, was the uh, was the last one based on a year. Um, when it was it, I think no, technically, it technically, it would have been it was Flight Sim twenty. It was a, it was a reboot of the series, but I think previously, uh, I think they were uh, year based. But uh, that I mean, based off its original release, we get this is a, probably likely a summer release for next year. Um, looks good. <laughs> they have also, I apologize. They also have the Dune expansion uh, for, the, for the current flight sim that's out. Um, which uh, I like how they do these these tie-ins. But for flight sim, the next one, the next year's game, uh, you're gonna be doing a lot. They they're adding a lot of things other than just flying. There's like rescue missions and 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 like emergency stops. They're letting you do stuff yeah. with the actual stuff you're flying. Like yeah, yeah, which is which is cool because it adds more. Um, I guess a more objective to the game because flight sim right now it's just you know just fly here fly. It's just more so the experience and and teaching yourself how to you know fly just for the thrill of it in the game the other game um they're gonna have you know more objective based stuff and i think that's cool you know adds more reason uh to play but once again man xbox game studios came strong here with a lot of uh, games um 
So one of uh, the other things was obviously Hellblade 2. Again, it was a game I either expected them to open or close the show with, uh, but they didn't. They It showed up in the middle of the game. I was happy to see it. The game looks good, but this is where uh, I got more so a bit disappointed with the Hellblade 2 showing is because I expected... I guess more so gameplay, more action uh, gameplay. Uh, This one, they gave us a a story, like one of those story moments that uh, that we experienced a lot in the the previous game. And one of the things I'm looking forward to uh, for Hellblade 2. Just keep talking, I can hear you. I got you. Uh, For Hellblade 2 was uh i wanted to, it to become a more of an action game you know uh more of the uh the combat to see how uh that's gonna uh work um but apparently um you know this is was the the down point that i got uh for for the for the trailer I think it looks good it, it is obviously bringing back the elements of the original game a lot of people were afraid when Hellblade 2 was first revealed that they were going to get rid of the psychosis uh, moment um, that made the game what it is. Um, but it's clear it's bringing back the, you know, the whole, you know, lore of the game. Um, like, again, what I Hellblade, there's no denying Hellblade 2 will look good. It's going to look gorgeous. I, I, it's, it's time that we see more of your hand, hand-to-hand ca- combat. It's like I almost wish that they show uh, this one at the key, uh, the Keeleys like you know a couple years ago, and then show the what we got the Keeleys here because I think it would have had the, the impact would have been different. Still would have had complaints because it was you know you know basic gameplay, but I think we need to see more hand to hand combat with this one. And this one was also a letdown because I and this is more so my fault because I you know anticipated this game to be this year maybe November this year uh possibly um but it's it, it's not it's a sure shot for 2024 and the reason why that you know is you know a letdown because xbox has nothing like else outside of starfield and forza starfield and forza is pretty much it and some third-party assistance um and some game pass drops is pretty much it for xbox for the remainder of the year and that becomes disappointing because a lot of the games that released in 2023 were all games that were targeting another year which was uh 2022 Yeah, I think that when it comes down to, I think the industry's changed in a lot of ways that they do, you know, types of content drops. I do believe since they, like I said, they're doing these more surgical announcements with stuff like directs, they're going to be more keen to holding information back, you know. And when it comes to Hellblade, Hellblade in general, I was very disappointed with. I think that's the reason that my my scoring of this went down. Yeah. Because I felt like we don't know anything different from Hellblade than we did at launch. You know, we've seen a little bit of gameplay, and I hope they don't consider that all the gameplay we need to see. But one of the biggest improvements that people wanted to see from Hellblade, and it's not me because I don't really care about Hellblade like that, is the is the combat. And to me, they've done a really poor job showing the combat in this game. It's got to the point where you can argue that they're not showing it because they have something to hide. I don't think that, but I can see why people would think that. And I think they need to, you know, do a better job of being transparent to what this game's going to do. Because at the end of the day, this is an action game. You know, there's a lot of action going on in this game. And we haven't seen her pull her sword out one time. And I, I see that as an issue. If that's the biggest, the biggest hit that I gave this show was the lack of gameplay for Hellblade. Because it was the most disappointing by far. No, I can agree. I can agree. That's also the reason why my initial score, you know, dropped. I feel like they were coming hot and heavy, but I think Hellblade was sort of that, like, that blow. And it's not like what they showed was bad. It's that we expected more, considering this game was first revealed in 2019 with that, you know, CGI trailer. And then they showed it off uh, again with the, uh, with the, um, with the gameplay, which is, and then to come back. With this, and this is, believe it or not, this is the first time Hellblade 2 shows up at the Xbox Game Showcase in the, since it's been revealed. Um, so I expected, you know, gameplay, and that's what really brought the 
uh, the the score uh, the, the score down the showcase it had an impact and it, it, like I said it's not because of what we saw was bad it's that we expected more and for me it was two things it was the lack of combat gameplay and the unfortunate it's like this is a oh it's 2024 you know you know I thought this game would be much closer it's been it feel like it's been in development forever since it's been revealed um but that was pretty much um you know it from there but happy to see it and you know hopefully we see more from it um moving forward uh the next game they ended up showing was the yakuza uh what's it infinite wealth or uh i don't is this is it's not it's called like a dragon i'm I'm getting so confused because there's these like a dragon games that are just called like a dragon and then you have the yakuza series but there's a like a dragon game coming out um i think in september uh if i'm not mistaken and then there's one that came out last year and this one looks like what appears to be the yakuza like yakuza 8 this would this what i think is is yakuza 8 but i think they titled it like a dragon your thoughts on this uh naked trailer (laughs) yeah it it was definitely a weird trailer to show you know maybe because they know that we know it's turn-based because uh the main character on there is from the turn-based franchise that's pretty much what they're doing you know there's like a dragons is turn-based and like a dragons it's not i prefer if they would just change the marketing in general and just call the turn-based like a dragon and call the regular ones just yakuza uh but you know who who am i to tell them how to run their stuff so yeah i hope that doesn't blow back on their face but part of me thinks it's going to <laughs> what what did you think about these uh the up down the things we didn't want to say we talked about this in our prediction show last week we didn't want to see you know the updates to like fallout 76 and elder scrolls and halo and sea of thieves and that's what we got those sort of also filled uh the show um what what was your thoughts in regards to those and were they necessary for the show could they have waited and you know talked about that and for tuesday's extension show and, and and filled in those uh, post with you no know, new games or extended gameplay. This is a really weird topic. Like me personally, I don't want to see that at a showcase. You know, I feel like how many years are we going to see Starfield, Fallout seventy six, and Elder Scrolls Online? Mm-hmm. But at the same time, I got to be realistic that I'm not the only person that plays Xbox. I personally feel like it could have been in the the extended show. That's yeah. where I think it should be. Yeah, absolutely. But you can make that argument that I know five people over here that love that game, and then that they it excited them. Now, I don't think that those took anything away from it. Now, it comes to the the Sea of Thieves, that was with uh, you know Monkey Island. Yeah, I can see that why that needed to be there. That was yeah, yeah. a big big moment, like collaboration between two brands. That's one thing. But if you're just announcing a regular expansion, save that for its own showcase or just put it into the extended showcase. But I can understand why they put it here. It's it's a big stage. It's like the same example where people say, well, Addict, they showed this at the Video Game Awards because it has a bigger audience. The audience at this showcase is going to be way bigger than the extended showcase. So, you know, I can understand that. But if you say that same logic, then, you know, Where's Halo? You know, you you gonna show something at all? Like that, that's where I feel like you have a showcase where you put a lot of those type of announcements. And then you know it might be Microsoft, you know, taunting a little bit. You know, Sony, you want these games? We have them. Like <laughs> so, yeah, it, it is what it is. I personally feel like they could do better with that, but mm-hmm. I can't. It's very important for me to know that I can't act like. I'm the only person on Xbox, but to me, they could do that at a different time. All right. Shout out to Capcom who come in Uh, Japanese. All right. Between, you know, it was Western RPGs, JRPGs, you know, between Atlas Capcom shows up to showcase with a brand new IP. What would you, what did you think when that, that trailer first played and we, we saw that it was Capcom. What, 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 did you think it was like an existing IP? Like what, what, what was running through your mind since you were there, like sort of live while it was happening? I didn't know what that was, but I, I really like, regardless how I feel mm-hmm. about the game. Cause I, it didn't really do much for me. I can't act like that didn't, that didn't look good. 
like to to for when it comes to a Japanese standpoint, like they're they're doing better. I do feel like they need to improve on on other aspects, but I can't act like they haven't improved on what's going on with the Japanese thing. Just Capcom being on their their stage at all is good. You know, they had Sega there, Capcom. It, it, it's good, man. Like I, I don't think I'll play it. You know, it isn't Game Pass stuff, I believe, if I remember correctly. Yep. So this is the know, second major IP from Capcom launching in Game Pass day one. The other one is Echo. Uh, was uh, the Exo Primal, which comes out next month. So you know, maybe I will try it. Because yeah. at the end of the day, Path of the Goddess. Yeah. At the end of the day, if that's there, then then I can just download it. The beauty about Game Pass, I would never probably play something like this. Because of Game Pass, you might get me to be a fan in the future. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, they've also showed what we expected. You know, Forza Motorsport. Um, unfortunately, this again, like the Persona games, uh, got its release date like leaked. Um, and like the cover also got leaked like uh, some weeks in advance, but the release date got leaked like uh, earlier in the week. Uh, it's coming out October 10th uh for xbox series x and s and pc um looks good obviously it's 4k 60 ray tracing um they they got a forza monthly coming up on tuesday where they're going to talk more in detail about the game i i seen enough already I, um it, it took a while for this game to come out uh people don't realize the last forza motorsport baseline game came out in 2017 in october 2017 that game has since been delisted that's how long it's been since there's been a forza uh since the mainline force game there's usually about two games to come out before you know one gets delisted um so i'm looking forward to this game um and this essentially has to it, this game in starfield kind of really has to like you know knock it out the park for um xbox in 2023 in terms of critical reception i think you know based off what we see for from starfield you know it, it may do its job forza naturally it, it, it's hard because it's a it's a it's a racing game it's a a, a sports sim or a racing sim uh so it's only so much you can do sure it can be the best in its class it can be a high rated game i have no doubt that forza motorsport may end up being some sort of 89 91 rated racing game and, and does a good job i i don't know how, the commercial success but i think it will be successful and hopefully it holds it down and i think starfield obviously has to do what it needs to do but um i and i think what took when to out, out of the show uh for me is that yeah it's the, everything that we saw was great i'm excited about some of these games and you start thinking about things that from other studios the studios that didn't show up ips that didn't show up that's been missing for a while you start thinking about that um and then you start thinking about like man there's not really much uh left for xbox in the year um because the there the two games that are left are starfield and forza motorsport and again i think i said this earlier these were games that we were expecting you know you know last year and in some cases the year before that i agree and you know there's a lot of things that i feel like i i expected here that wasn't here you know Mm -hmm. like indiana jones uh, things like that Mm -hmm. and then i i do feel like we can be honest besides like the exile entertainment there wasn't a lot of wow factor you know and and, you know that that's not necessarily their fault i do think to a point some of these games was leaked and Mm -hmm. i think that is the biggest issue than anything is that these games was leaked but that it's not necessarily their fault um, you know, that's that's Atlas's fault. And Atlas took some of that some of that punch out. But as far as like are we doing overall perspective on it at this point? Like Um Yeah, I mean I'm trying to think of uh some other games that were uh uh shown that we can um go across. Let me just have the tr- uh the showcase essentially playing uh behind us. Uh I was right. I said Blizzard would show up, they just showed up with an existing game. <laughs> They showed up with Overwatch 2 um at the at the showcase. Uh so um and then we know what's going take what's taking place tomorrow. Uh Xbox did I don't want to call it weird, but they they had Starfield show a little three minute showcase, uh a trailer for Starfield anything. And I and I think that was more so 
just in case people miss out on the the showcase afterwards, which was the Starfield Direct. Um, so I don't um, blame them for that. I didn't take too much uh, from that. Um, there was also the Cyberpunk thing. Have you beaten the original, the base game for uh, Cyberpunk? Mm-hmm. No? No, I didn't. Okay. Um, neither have I, so I, I'll have to uh, play uh, so, uh, Cyberpunk before this uh, thing comes out. Uh, there is this game, Dungeons of Hinden- Hindenburg, which uh, showed... So another cartoon game. It was a low key game. Um, Cyberpunk's coming out, and uh, what's this? This expansion is coming out. When is it going to be like thirty dollars? But uh, I think the main draw for this one is um, Idris Elba, the actor there. So uh, the game's been. I know they fixed the game. The game is in a much better state than it was a couple years ago when it launched. Um, so I've never played the. I played through the game. I played maybe at most an hour and a half of the game uh back in 2020 when it came out when it was in a rough state uninstalled it um since then not because i thought it was bad it's just that i didn't have the time you know i was playing i think assassin's creed uh valhalla immortals phoenix rising um a few other games around that time that I could sort of just put it down and never really got back to it but uh, i'd like to get myself into it probably hopefully beat it before this expansion is available uh but it's good that Xbox is still keeping in connection with that game, um, which is is uh, which is good. Um, the game I want to also talk about is uh, In Exile. Man, what did you think when In Exile came up? And they, I didn't ex- I didn't expect In Exile's game. I, I think we you know we both like you know teased at it, but uh, the Clockwork Revolution it looks it looks a little bit like. Bioshock mixed with uh that looks crazy. It, yeah, it's it, yeah, it looks crazy. This is and it's a first person um RPG. Uh and it does it does look good. It does look really good. I can't I like how how did how do you think this uh showed? I think this I think this showed well. I do too. I think that you know, that's exactly what we needed was a, a surprise like that. I didn't expect them there when they showed up. Mm. That was pretty much their one more thing was yeah. that. Yeah, uh, I, I think they should have did a better job explaining their one more thing. You know, I didn't like how they went from from their game to this game. Like, I felt like they should have did a little bit better mm-hmm. when it comes to that particular thing. Like, they, they should have one more thing, then to that, uh, to, to the Exile game, then go into the other game uh to the starfield thing i just felt like they try to make starfield like part of that one and to me i wanted to see them more as starfield is its own thing but they went from one to the other you know for people in the crowd i sat there for two hours but my knees were hurt like, <laughs> they were hurt <laughs> yeah um i mean this looks it looks really good uh clockwork of uh, revolution new ip from in exile uh it says coming in due time hopefully that's if hopefully they can get that out next year i think obviously xbox needs uh i, I think they need um obviously we know the two games that guarantees the hellblaze and evolved for next year but i think they need you know obviously two more major titles um next year and hopefully uh uh clockwork is one of them um phil spencer uh showed up to showcase as usual gave us a summary um, I I got also another thing right from the prediction. What didn't I didn't I mention uh, different color Xbox Series S? Didn't I? Yeah. I mean, now I expected Did like you say X or S. Like I, I said, feel like you said X. No, I said S. You said S. I said the S. Oh, uh, the the Series S. I was like, because those are the ones you can get more creative with, with the colors and stuff like that. But they announced, you know, the Xbox Series. Oh yeah, because because then because then, then we were talking of because you said that they no you said I said that it would be part of the design. Lab no, no, to, I said I gave you two options. Want. I said, will it a be part of Phone Labs or would they release a different color? Uh, or release as colors, uh, different color series. I hear you. I, I, I'll give you that. I'll give you that. Like, <laughs> I don't need to fight you over that because you you kind of did get that right. <laughs> One terabyte uh, Xbox Series S, three hundred forty nine dollars. Um, 
I, I, storage, I don't think storage was really the issue to address with Series S, though. I think it was more so the performance. <laughs> That's the thing to address the Series S. I mean, I'm not mad at it. I'm willing to trade in my white Series S to get a black one just for, you know, aesthetics. Um, but $350 comes out September 1st. Uh, they had a uh, Starfield, obviously, uh, close uh the show with the with a 42 minute presentation uh they find they formally reveal the controller uh the headset and the watch which i'm interested in all three um but the game play demonstration man i need to know like your thoughts do you feel better about starfield do you feel you have a better understanding about starfield now uh, than before, and how do you think it's going to perform? I'm sorry, I got to sit back here because uh, my my back is killing me it's from fine. my thing. It's fine. Um, Starfield from now to uh, I think Starfield look good. You know, yeah. Here's the thing about Starfield. I'm standing up. I'm sorry, Audi. I I've been sitting down for two hours. Okay, <laughs> like I can't help it. All right, so I'm gonna sit here. I'm gonna walk around like this. I think Starfield looks phenomenal. Uh, I do. I think that it, it apparently was rumored that I don't know if this is public, but I guess it is now uh, that that it jumped in and helped them oh, after the last present presentation. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. That, that they fine tuned some of the gameplay, and if you look at it, that gameplay looked a little like it. Yeah. Yeah. The shooting. You know. Yeah. It's so, you know, I, I hope that's the case because what I saw there, here's the question I have to you, Smooth. Mm -hmm. Is it 60? I don't think it is because uh, here's the thing. Yeah, you look at some of that gameplay, yeah. some of it looks 60, some of it didn't, and some of it looks 60 dropping frames like crazy. That frame rate was everywhere. Yeah, um, I think this is a game, like I said previously, about Flight Sim, when they, how they did Flight Sim. I think it's going to be a game with an unlocked frame rate. It, if they got away with flight sim being a game with an unlocked frame rate and then if you play on the VR display, you know, you can get 60 or be 60. I think they're going to be, they're going to, it's going to be 60 in combat and like in closed quarters and stuff. But while you're out in the world and exploring is, it's not going to be a uh, 60. Will it have a performance mode? I don't know. I'm going to say no. Uh, and I'm going to go with the worst case scenario. I think it's an unlocked frame rate. So I'm not saying it's 60. I just think it's an unlocked frame rate. And I think that, is because those type of games is really the best case scenario. Think about it. Nobody's really complaining about Hogwarts Legacy and all that other stuff. That's an unlocked frame rate game. Like these aren't like you know solid 60 experiences. Um but I do think uh yeah we're not gonna get like you know uh, uh, I don't know if we'll get a performance mode. I, I'm 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 not exactly uh sure about that. And um but based off what we saw but Based off what we saw, I am impressed, and I'm in I'm interested. I'm actually interested. Previously, I wasn't really, wasn't all that interested in like Starfield, but I am interested, and I'm I'm willing. I'm I want to I want to get that controller. I want to get that headset, and I want to actually want to buy the game. I would like you know I might I might I want to buy the game. I, I don't have to wait for Game well, Pass. I told, I told the IOP. I was like, I'm gonna need that controller and headset. <laughs> so both of them are being sent to me now. So. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I figured. Um, I think the game. If it, I, I gotta check the Xbox Store to see what it's. Uh, it is. It's in there right now. Is it? Okay. Uh, so the. Yeah. So the headset's one hundred and thirty. Okay, so thirty. They, they making you thirty dollars more. They make you. They make you pay thirty for that for that Starfield yeah. branding. Yeah. Like, <laughs> okay. And I could have probably hit up Xbox and had them send us some, but I, I I don't like to do that unless like it's something I really, really, really want. Because to me, when I go and ask for something, I want a guaranteed yes. And I don't want to constantly ask for stuff and then yeah. get no's. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Absolutely. Uh, yeah, but Starfield looks incredible. Uh, a lot of people... Uh, what I'm seeing on Twitter is a lot of coping moments. A lot of people are, you know, the there. There's a lot of naysayers who's trying to down the presentation, and a lot of people are trying to put it up against Spider-Man for, uh, for for some reason. I don't know why Starfield and, and, and Spider-Man, but 
uh, for what this game is doing, it's big. It, I don't understand how, like, I don't know how, who makes a game. Like, this game is too big for its own good. It could be either good or it could be bad, but it's, it's, it's incredibly, um, it's incredibly, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, immersive. And, um, there's a lot going on, um, with this game. And I, I'll be satisfied just trying a fraction of the game. Man, I don't like I'm not ex- interested in exploring the entire, you know, galaxy and stuff, but you know, I am interested in playing and 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 and, and seeing pretty much how things play out with the different um factions and base building. What I like what I like to, you know, obviously we're on the Starfield. Let, let, let's 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 take it back a little bit. Yep. You know, and give ratings just to the showcase without the starfield all right so all things considered without starfield uh eight and a half that's what i'm giving it i feel like it lost half a point for the lack of release dates and it lost a whole point for the hellblade if they would have gave me hellblade combat and they gave me at least a vowel or hellblade's release date mm-hmm. not even both just one of them yeah if i've gotten one release gave, date, yeah it, it, it would have been a damn near perfect show like it's just yeah. you know give me a bunch of release windows like 2024 and we saw from like god of war ragnarok that 2021 2022 doesn't mean shit like, yeah. Just... yeah it doesn't um yeah that like i said it wasn't like that anything from the game the showcase was bad it was the fact that we had expectations for certain like we wanted obviously release dates we wanted and we wanted more you know gameplay uh, from games that they've shown um, previously, and um, and that, I think that's what really hurt. It. If you, if, like I said, if we would have gotten, if I would have gotten a combat gameplay from Hellblade, because like I said, we've already seen. I know how gorgeous Hellblade looks already. So if I would have gotten a combat gameplay for Hellblade and a release, if you told me a uh, spring twenty twenty four or early twenty twenty uh, four for one of the other uh, two games. Yeah, I'm. It's 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 a it's a nine nine and a half um uh ten score. But overall, like I was impressed with what I saw. I it was the best showcase that we've seen for this year. Uh, out of all the ones that sh- um showed, they didn't screw it up. It wasn't a poor showcase. Um, but it wasn't yeah. one without. Oh, no. oh, stop! Stop! Did you get like breaking news? No. Look at Jado. He posted this on Twitter. It shows him buying all of it. He bought that, oh. that, oh, the, he... the the Starfield edition, and he bought the uh, black Xbox the Series, Series S. S. <laughs> wow, wow, yeah. So, uh, um... I see, and this is what I was saying earlier. Like when it comes to the to don't count Starfield out. Is Zelda gonna win Game of the Year? Probably. But if Starfield does a fraction of what old Todd Howard on that stage was saying, I can easily see it going that way too. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> this year is going to be crazy because it's it's going to be Starfield, Elda, Diablo, and Spider Man mm-hmm. running for Game of the Year. You think Spider Man is going to be? Uh... It might. I know, I know for for sure, uh, it's gonna be Diablo, Zelda, Starfield, uh, maybe Spider Man, uh, um, and what's the other game, uh, Jedi, and why well, I feel like there's another game I'm not considering right now that should be considered. Um, but overall, what's your grade for the Starfield showcase? Nine out of ten. Nine out of ten. And I said I I'd, I'd give it a nine out of ten, and the it's losing a point because they didn't clarify the performance. <laughs> yeah, it's the same yeah. thing with me. Uh, like, look at this point, most likely it's going to be thirty frames. It's not going to be performance mode because maybe not thirty. Maybe they'll try to push it as much as they can. I'm telling you, it's like, going to be an unlocked th- frame rate. <laughs> well, that's fine too, but it's, it's like to me at this point, it's like you didn't say it on the stage. I wouldn't be surprised if tomorrow it shows up on the blog mm. or. Or maybe the extended show. Uh, so you know, it, it is what it is on that. But my, Microsoft really pulled up this today. Like, you know, King being messy, but King was right on a lot of the messiness he was doing. You mm-hmm. know, they 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 did well, man. They did well. 
yeah yeah great show overall and um i'm looking forward uh, i'm gonna try to see what games i'm gonna get into i'm looking forward to starfield like i said i'm contemplating uh contemplating a, a pre-order on that um i'm definitely going to get the controller and the headset um and uh yeah we'll see uh i'm, I'm I, I think for the rest of the year i mean there's uh for as far as like games that are coming uh lies of good. P, we got the demo we're good uh starfield's looking it doesn't look like it's going to be delayed again forza is going to be uh uh great um and one that was surprised there was the fallout 4 man what happened but to be honest stuff like that could be showed for the at the extended yeah, like true. little like boost stuff like that do you let's be real may, maybe they should have added it on to that fallout 76 stuff yeah. but do you really care they didn't tell you that they're going to give fallout 4 a next gen mo- uh upgrade uh yeah probably not, probably not yeah. it, it would have been cool to be there but like did we really care not really not really yeah but um attic man uh it, we got through you know another one Shout out to you and Cognito. I saw the pictures. You guys all, uh, you know, in L.A. with Phil, Aaron Greenberg, and you know Sarah Bond, uh, Jason Ronald. Um, uh, I saw all those photos. Still waiting on my Hold the Line T-shirt. Um, but man, when do you come back? Tonight? Tomorrow? I leave in the morning. Tomorrow. Okay. Well, you know, safe travels to you. Uh, uh, hope you had a great time out there. Looks like you did. Um, but uh, thank you for also making time while you're away uh, in L.A. to uh, do a, a quick uh, reaction uh, show uh, to the showcase. Uh, so we're going to get this on Planet Xbox, uh, the Patreon, Weapon Will Patreon shortly after. But before we go, we're going to you know, get into some uh, Patreon uh, questions. So just give me one quick second while I pull up these uh, uh, questions here. Oh, man. There we go. You know that stream that you got uh, that you did already has fifteen thousand views. Oh, does it? Mm-hmm. Awesome. I'm happy. Really happy to be a, a part of that. Let me just make sure I. Nope. Oh man. There we go. Um. So, Patreon, Patreon. All right. So. First question is from Jack Jack Wes Thomas or Jack Thomas says Sub Planet Xbox. Hope you guys are well. Have you guys picked up Diablo 4? It's a fantastic game. I think you guys should play, especially since it runs at 4K native at 60 FPS with no frame dips. Uh we got Diablo 4. Right? I, I haven't played I haven't it. Played it. I haven't played it a lot because I, I was packing and getting ready for this trip but i'll get to it sometime this week yeah definitely help maybe i'll download it i have it downloaded i'm definitely gonna uh get into it like i took a break overall for, from gaming i, I think played anything significant in about two weeks or so i'm a barbarian like level 12 or 13 or something like that like i did play a little bit of it already not a lot okay because yeah I'm, yeah I'm level nothing the only thing I played of it was like the early access, like I think beta or demo or something like that, that they had out the, the server crashers. Uh, but yeah, I'm looking forward to it. I did see the, the tech reviews on it. It's running that native 4K 60 FPS. It looks good. It's best looking Diablo ever, of course. Uh, Alex King says, if you could trade a franchise with any Sony or Nintendo IP, what would it be, Attic? For if Xbox, you could trade any IP. Spider-Man. Yeah, I would trade... So, do do I have to say what would would you trade on Ari? Yeah, what would you trade? Um, Redfall for Spider Man. Yeah, I trade, you know, I'll do you one. um, This is what I would do I would trade, I'll give him a better game. I'll trade Sea of Thieves for Spider Man. No, I wouldn't go that far as Sea of Thieves because people really love Sea of Thieves. No, you can love Sea of Thieves. I'm just saying, personally, selfishly, I'd trade it for Spider Man. I, I feel you. But the, people love Spider Man. You got too. about Spider Man. Like, you got three games already. You have Spider Man, Spider Man, Miles Morales, and Spider Man Two. You know what's funny? The fact that Sony wants—they probably wouldn't do it with Spider Man, but the fact that Sony wants a, a successful games as a service so much, 
they would potentially trade one of their biggest IPs for Sea of Thieves. That's the sad part. Yeah, it's clearly the inve- the the investment's going towards that way. So. Yeah. Uh, a- Alex Keen also asked. Uh, uh, I think this is uh, is for me. He says, if given the feature, given the feature verse of your choosing, what artist would you have on a new Xbox anthem smooth? And you can't say Trey songs. Um, with the artists, would I want? Oh man, that's a good question. I'm gonna say, um, hmm, damn. I'm gonna say the game. The game. I'll say the game for sure. Um Avery Amber says Japan, in my opinion, will always be dominated by Nintendo and Sony. So my question is, what are your thoughts if Xbox caters towards a different demographic? Financing an exclusive fantasy Middle Eastern game since that area isn't explored unless it's COD. Or games set in Latin America, even places like India, Xbox has no chance in Japan. But I do believe it can take other territories like Middle East or Latin America. That's a good, 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 good question. So read the beginning part. Uh, you kind of broke up. On she the says part. Avery Amber says Japan, in my opinion, will always be dominated by Nintendo and Sony. So my question is, what are your thoughts if Xbox caters towards a different demographic? Financing and an exclu- uh, financing an exclusive fantasy Middle Eastern game since that area isn't explored unless it's Call of Duty, or a game set in Latin America, even in places like India. Xbox has no chance in Japan, but I do believe it can take other territories like the Middle East or Latin America. The problem is, it's not necessarily about. It's not about catering to a certain demographic. It's about mm. having a diversified library. Look, are they ever going to do anything drastic in Japan? Most likely not. And, you know, to a to, to degree, PlayStation don't even really do it like that anymore. Yeah, no, they don't. You know, you, you have to cater to Japan in a certain way to be successful there. And one of the biggest ways, mobile. And I think that's one of the reasons that Microsoft is investing so much in the cloud technology. Because it's one of the only ways to get into these regions that have abandoned the console market and the PC market to a degree. Yeah. Uh, you know, they're they're all doing everything that's they're doing everything on the go. And that's why, you know, Switch does so well there mm-hmm. because it goes to the model that the that the demographic plays to over there. Uh as far as like other territories, I agree with you, you know, but I'm not abandoning the Japan Japan market. Microsoft has to do better in every market mm-hmm. because they are a console owner. Mm-hmm. In order to be successful in multiple regions, you have to cater some of your audience and some of your games to that audience yeah. and until microsoft starts really hitting these areas really hard and i think they're doing better but there's always room for improvement and we see that through the sales yeah i'm gonna say uh yeah there there's other ways to get in at you know japanese uh the Jap- japanese market the chinese market that's through pc and mobile gaming um however i do believe uh with avery amber saying about you know yeah, sure. There's JRPGs you can do, but yeah, why not? Let's look into the history and the culture of Latin America or um, Africa, uh, you know, um, like South Africa, or whatever. And um, India, they have there's like there's co- cultures, there's lores, there's stories that can be told uh, gameplay games that can be created that could cater uh to those audience that you know just like japanese games are catered to japanese but um, westerners a handful of them like those type of games because it's something about the combat something about this the way the story is being told um i but i really think that is a good question it's something that should be explored it's like okay they got the japanese market where can we go go to latin america xbox does have a bigger presence in south america you know obviously mexico brazil um they should also you know obviously consider india india has always has potential um there, there's just so many you know the population there um i would definitely if i was xbox explore you know diverse and i obviously my library but trying to explore those get those uh games that you know nobody else is making that could 
be a phenomenon in those uh, territories. So great question, Avery Amber. Uh, Chill says Mortal Kombat or Street Fighter? Attic, which one? Mortal Kombat. I'm going to go. Just because I, I enjoy the lore more than Street Fighter. Um, I will say. I think I can. I'm going to. I like Mortal Kombat for sure. I like Mortal Kombat, but I'm probably. I probably. I think I'm a better gamer at Street Fighter. Um, but I'll say I'll say Street Fighter. Um, then Mortal Kombat is a better looking game, you know, more mature game. But I'm gonna say Street Fighter in general. Um, overall, but I'm, the fighters are not my strongest key points, and I'm generally not buying those games, you know, day one. But um, thank you guys for you know checking out the show. The the Xbox showcase is done. It's a wrap. We're gonna let everybody do get out and fight out on Twitter. There's a lot of people hating and trying to you know you know cope because they still couldn't get over places having a bad showcase. Xbox had a great showcase. Sure, were there some flaws in there? Absolutely. But overall, uh, they delivered. Nothing was going to be perfect. Yeah, they delivered where I needed. To, they delivered. They, the first party showed up big. Uh, they revealed new IPs and they gave us, you know, mo- much needed updates on games that they previously announced. But uh, we will see you guys next Saturday. N- another episode of uh, Play Xbox Podcast. Hope, hope we may have a guest. Um, I'm, I'm not exactly sure. I'm thinking about. Uh, having uh Sergey uh uh the great join us for an episode. Um who knows, Attic, I'll you know reach out to you about that. Um other than that, man, it's been a great episode. I'm gonna let you rest up because like you need to get up <laughs> and I need to take a nap. <laughs> but uh thank you guys as always Xbox is the best box. Good night or good morning if you're on the other side of the globe. We are out of here. Attic Peace.